uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Starwood primarily is our mass production facility. Mm -hmm. So it's dedicated to most of the top 100 retailers in the US, mm -hmm. as, well as, uh, as well as some of the big lifestyle guys, such yep. as Pottery Barn, West Elm, and people like that. Yes. Um, whereas Thomas Carey is focused a lot more on the high value products. Yeah. So our customers would primarily be people like Restoration Hardware or um, Caracol. Yeah. And, um, now we've brought in some of the higher end vanity projects as well, given oh, yeah, the yeah. tariff situation. Sure, yeah. But we see that as a short term uh, move, and mm -hmm. in the long, because of some of the you know open capacities in the high end market. Mm -hmm. But in the long term, we're, I think Thomas Carey will still be focused on the um, high value, low vo low volume goods. Yeah, that's so, right. And we're also doing some of the hospitality projects, yeah. such as um, Venetian in Macau. Okay. With the uh, uh, Las Vegas Sands Group. Okay. Excellent. And yeah. uh, Royal Corinthian will be primarily focused on metal and mm -hmm. metal related furniture. Mm -hmm. So um, we have three different areas of products where we're focusing on. One of which, which is the metal parts for Starwood and for Thomas Carey. So okay. it's making the legs of a nightstand, the um, metal trims and stuff like that and hardware. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, we're exporting metal furniture to the okay. likes of Restoration Hardware and Made.com in, in, in Europe. Oh, and, I see. And also, we are right now moving into the home goods, home goods theory, uh, um, category in terms of the shelving units yeah. for the likes of Sam's Club and I see. in the future probably Home Depot yeah. with the likes of five tier, six tier shelving. So you're doing that metal beds and um, like de metal desks, bases, yeah. occasional tables, yeah, metal yeah. parts. I did not put the shelving on there mm -hmm. because it's not the nicest aesthetically, but it's one yeah. of the nicest in terms of volume. Yes, yeah. Okay, all right. And what's the capacity um, of, of uh, Royal Corinthian currently? Is right there... now we're doing roughly about 1.5 million. 1.5 million, but in terms of, of containers, containers, I would say that's about 50. 50 containers per month. That's that's currently. And yeah. what's the overall capacity? We're looking to expand it to about 80 to 100 by the end of the month, uh, by the end of this year. Okay. And the okay. majority of it will be from the shelving business. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've already had a, I would say, almost triple. Mm -hmm. in growth since the same time last year and okay. this is primarily due to that shelving so oh, with, I see. Yeah, with yeah. only uh, furniture and furniture parts we can only get to about 20 or 30 containers yeah I see yeah yeah I see so so furniture and furniture parts is 20 to 20 20 to 30 containers yeah okay and the other 70 to 80 all comes from this shelving business yeah yeah okay and potentially it will be 150 by next year wow by the end of 2020 wow. yeah 2020 yeah yeah and how many workers um at royal corinthian 400 right? 400 okay less than five uh, it's a little over 400 okay yeah okay and what is the, um, how many square meters is that uh, facility? Roughly about 22,000 square meters, so about 2.5, 2.5 million square feet. Yeah, say. okay. On the roof. On the roof. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. And is Thomas the top, of Officer Thomas Luck? Yes. Okay. Got it. And, uh, all right. Um, and how many years, uh, that started in 2016, Royal Corinthian. Yes, it did. How many years selling to the U.S.? Um, Ever since it's been established. Okay. Been selling to the US. Yeah, so, since so U.S. is the primary market for all three of our facilities. Yeah, okay. And we have some sideways, you know, projects for China mm -hmm. and Europe. But I would say ever since the tariff, yeah. U.S. has once again became our top market okay. and sort of squeeze away everybody else's share. I see. Ways. So it's 100% export and, and most of that is to the U.S. market. Could we we have occasional local projects in hospitality, but that yeah, would yeah. be, as you say, very insignificant in terms okay. of the total volume, yeah, okay. less than 1%. Okay, okay. And around 1% to 2%. Yeah, yeah. 98%, 98%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
So 98% to the U.S. market, essentially. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, yeah. And how many um, workers overall at uh, Royal Corinthian? We have about 400. 400 something. Oh, okay, so four, yeah. So of four that, how, four, and how, how many are production workers? I would say 400, in the early 400, about 420 production workers. Yeah, yeah. And about 10 to 20 different executives. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. You know, okay. purchasing, yeah. administrative staff. Okay, thank you. So I will leave three facilities, you know, uh, we got investment, you know, from a month last year. So they invested a total in three facilities. In three, so yeah, all yeah, three. They centralized and managed the whole three facilities yeah. here in this office. I see. So that's why if you take a look at the Thomas Carey and the Royal Cranky, their mm -hmm. executive is very, very little. Yeah, yeah, Just I see. Yes, yes, I see. I understand. And, and Thomas, are you the top officer of um, Thomas Carey, TC uh, also? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right. And if I could just go through this one real quick. So how many, um, can you break down uh, the size of the production facilities for Thomas Carey? How many square meters that would be for Thomas Carey? It would be 38,000 square 38, meters. 38, okay. 38,000, that's the land. Uh -huh. I believe in that. If we talk about production workshop, it should be around 30,000. 30,000, under roof, okay. Yeah, okay. Thank and you. For Starwood, it'll be 200,000 square meter. Starwood should be around, you know, uh, I think, you know, probably on the roof is 1.2 million square feet. Square feet. Uh, Under roof, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. And um, going back to Thomas Carey, how many production workers uh, for Thomas Carey? 500. Uh, 500 and, and, and then a small number yeah, of uh, ex small. 10. 10. 10. Okay, okay. And the capacity, total capacity of the factory? Right now um, we're talking about, about 100 containers. 100 per month. Currently shipping about 60 to 70. Per month, okay. Per so month. 60 to 70 per month shipping. This is just the case goods. And yeah. We're also shipping, we have a line, we're shipping about 20 to 30. Oh, okay. So, so plus twenty to thirty upholstery. Okay, so you're close. You're almost close to full capacity on that. Uh, really, enough. It, it depends on how we. Yeah, yeah. How the what kind of product we are running? So oh, we okay, run okay. Fiscus, yeah, yeah. The total is hundred. Yeah, yeah. But even though we are running the other stuff like vending, yeah, yeah. we can run much more. Oh, okay, okay. I would think probably hundred fifty. So, Oh, okay, so it's probably probably hundred hundred fifty. So hundred fifty between case and the vanity. What one one five zero? Right. Okay. And another you know, hundred for the for the upholstery. Oh, okay. The upholstery is just gonna take off. Oh, so there's another hundred for the upholstery. So we're talking two fifty total. Right. Two fifty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So right now you're shipping about 60 to 70 on the wood, 20 to 30 on the upholstery. That's what you're, okay, thank you. So basically bedroom, dining room, occasional. Yeah, and a lot of accent pieces. Accent, furniture, okay. And, 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 and upholstery. Vanity. Also vanity. And vanities, okay. Yes, with the upholstery, is it is it stationary or motion? Stationary. Stationary. Uh, okay. Stationary upholstery. Is it leather and fabric? Yeah, both. Mostly. Both. Yeah, leather. Mostly yeah. is a fabric. Mostly fabric. Some okay. leather. Yeah, fabric. We also have the leather project for green and barrel. Yes. Okay. Okay. How many years has Thomas Carey been selling to the U.S. since the beginning? Since the beginning. Since since two thousand five. Two thousand fifteen. 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Two thousand fifteen, and then. Percentage of sales that are export? Uh, 100%. 98. 98. 98 percent, okay. 97, and of that, how much is to the U.S. market? Of I the would say Thomas Carey only has about 90 percent to the U.S. There is about 7 yeah. to 8 percent to China. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, yeah, okay. So 90 percent of the overall export is to the U.S. and then, and then maybe 7 to 8 to China? Yeah. Okay, okay.
Thank you. Um, and, and any specific raw materials uh, that you'd like to mention with any, with Thomas Carey or Starwood? I would say for these days, oak will be our primary staple, North American white oak. North American. Both in terms of lumber and veneer. Yes. Yeah. That's at uh, Thomas Carey. Yeah, yeah. North American white oak. Mm -hmm. Solids and veneers? Solids and veneer. Whereas yeah. on the solid side, yeah, yeah. the veneer would be oak, but the solids would be something else. Yeah, like like Asian hardwood, or pop or alder or something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Or the wood. Yeah, yeah, okay. Any other veneers that you'd like to note with um, starwood? Um, okay. There's oh, there's a lot. A lot of them, yeah. A lot of veneers. Walnuts, yeah, yeah, yeah. primavera, eucalyptus, yeah. cephaly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quarter sawn oak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of quarter sawn oak. Yeah, I know there's probably a lot, so I don't need to mention all every single one. But what about on uh, Thomas Carey? What type of? Um... There are some rosewood for China. There are some, um, mm -hmm. as I say, um, exotics like bird's eye maple or sycamore. Yeah, yeah. And primarily, we're still running oak. Yeah, yeah. For okay. restoration, however. Yeah, I see. Okay. And these these are veneers, bird's eye maple, sycamore, and rosewood. Mm -hmm. Those are veneers. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Where Number would be beach or oak. Beach, or yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, solid. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. I think we're done with this. If I think of anything else, I'll I'll let you know. But okay, we'll let you continue. So this is uh, from last year, and it really shows the difference between last year and uh, 2018 and 2019. Mm -hmm. In 2018, I would say only about 91 percent is done to North America. Yeah. Um, there is a couple of percentage to China and Europe and mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. but since uh, the tariff has hit, yeah. about 98% of our um, exports are now going to U.S. Yeah, yeah. and okay. U.S. only, and the other 1% is Canada or you know, China or Europe and yeah, yeah. put together. So in the period of 12 months, I, I would say we have also um, had a lot of restructuring of our customer base mm -hmm. by working with a lot of new customers, but also mm -hmm. trimming down our existing customers. So in 2018, what was the breakdown again? 91, uh, USA is 89%. Yeah, okay. Canada about 2%, so that's 91 right there. Yeah, 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 okay. And then 6% China, 1% Europe, and others about 2%. Yeah, 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 okay. So some of our important partnerships include RH, Andrew yeah. Martin for China and Las Vegas Sands. Okay. You know, for them it's a, uh, a process of development rather than um, resourcing. Mm -hmm. So we've been developing two or three projects with them that's been successful. Mm -hmm. And in the next couple of years, we'll be developing a lot more. Mm -hmm. So these are some of our existing products with them and mm -hmm. the new projects that's coming up. Oh, okay with the i -beam collection, Martini. Mm -hmm. So um, hospitality for us, Sense Group, is they're the biggest casino group worldwide. So we've been working with them on some of the public spaces and also quoting on some of their guest rooms, uh -huh. such as the Wayne project that's coming up. And Andrew Martin is, as I said, um, it, uh, it was one of our growing points with the business with China. Mm -hmm. um, in 2018, but ever since the tariff has hit, um, we are really seeing a shrink in mm -hmm. their market share in our facility. But you know, they do have designs for some high end, unique looks that we're still working with. Mm -hmm. So, as we have said, some of the bird's eye maple, eucalyptus, and sycamore, those are the veneers that exotic veneers that these guys like mm -hmm. to use. So, we have three sort of very unique aspects of. Um, so I guess one of the one of the purposes really for our visit here is to um, our last trip here was in 2013. Right. So a lot has changed, obviously. Um, but the biggest thing to change in the past year to year and a half has been the situation with the um, the China tariffs, and we wanted to just get a sense of really how um, Starwood has kind of responded overall to that um, to that shift so sort of like I guess in a nutshell if you could kind of kind of walk us through right. some of the biggest um, things that have happened uh, associated with that shift with your business yes 
So I would say first of all that the shifts from U.S. to China, uh, to Vietnam, uh, beg your pardon, from China to Vietnam mm -hmm. has been ongoing for the past three to four years. Yeah. Ever since China has that tighten regulations on environmental issues, which yeah, yeah. pop up a lot of the prices and pop yeah. up a lot of the packaging material prices, so on and yeah, so yeah. forth. But this tariff on you uh, on from U.S. to China. Starting at ten percent has really escalated. Something that will happen over five to ten years, yeah. down to forcing everybody to move from six months to a year. Yes, and yes. ever since the race to twenty five percent, we are seeing POs being placed to us with nothing being confirmed. Like the person hasn't even been here yet, and they would send us but the PO said, yeah, "Can yeah. you make this for us?" With an inquiry. Yeah, so yeah. you know, um, for the. At ten percent, a lot of people were thinking this would just end right there. Yeah, yeah. And at twenty-five percent, it has made a lot of these, especially furniture uh, guys, move without any questions asked. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Of, you know, making stuff in China. Mm -hmm. So for us, um, the past two years has been a, a big transition, both in terms of the Markor acquisition uh, of them locking up the capacity over at Starwood and some, mm -hmm. um, you know, making a great plan. For yes. the future, so yeah. as to say, before everything happened mm -hmm. in, uh, initially, and also um, for us to re uh, readjust and reorganize our existing customer base. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have been focusing a lot more on a lot more on the lifestyle and home goods customers. Mm -hmm. And after the tariff on vanity and the anti-dumping on vanity, a lot on the vanity customers mm -hmm. rather than the traditional uh, furniture suppliers. Mm -hmm. uh, to the market for the majority of the past year. Mm -hmm. And the primary reason was that other than Marcor or mm -hmm. Caraco and ART, um, all of the other guys at market for us are um, volume wise, they are really limited. Mm -hmm. So efficiency for us has really dropped, dropped with the traditional furniture manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So we're focusing a lot more on for example, if we're talking about vanity, the most SKUs you can get out of any collection would be seven SKUs mm -hmm. because it's just different dimensions of mm -hmm. the same case good. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in a bedroom, you have to deal with mirrors and you have to deal with um, beds and you mm -hmm. have to deal with cases that's of different shapes and sizes, mm -hmm. including your me media chest and your chest and your mm -hmm. dresser. Mm -hmm. So none of them have the same depth, width or height. Yeah, yeah. Whereas on vanity, the height and the depth are always the same. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a changing of length. So, so there's an economy of scale there. Yes, sounds like, in terms yeah. of manufacturing, vanity will bring a lot more efficiency. Yeah, yeah. Which is part of the reason that we have transitioned a lot to vanity and most of our other manufacturing. So has that eaten a lot of capacity up? Then? I would say yes. Vanity right now is about thirty to forty percent of our existing production. So and that's from zero in twenty eighteen. Yeah, yeah. So we have a line set up dedicated to vanity, and it all happened really quickly. Mm -hmm. If you think about the lead time that we have for vanity, so all we have to worry about is the uh, components mm -hmm. for this genre, that is the sinks and the marble tops. Other than that, manufacturing only takes about 30 days for oh, okay. cutting. Yeah, yeah. So that's really helpful on our end as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And in terms of um, home goods as well, um, Sam's Club, they're moving a lot of these metal uh, shelving for yeah, us. Mm -hmm. And their demand for capacity from them is about 2 to 5, uh, 2 to 2.5 containers a day. Mm -hmm. So that means we need to be shipping about 75 containers to them to fulfill mm -hmm. the requirements. And right now, as of now, we're expanding our capacity on that on the end for sure, but we can only do about thirty to forty containers a month. Mm -hmm. So, but it's kind of eating up on our furniture, metal furniture aspect of production mm -hmm. because just like everything else, metal furniture in itself doesn't carry a lot of volume. Yeah, sure. So unless the pricing is really out of this world, yeah, um, metal furniture wise would just be. Um, a support to Starwood mm -hmm. and Thomas Carey, and we wouldn't be doing this for anybody else. So who are who are some of the customers for the vanities then? I mean, we're talking about Lowe's? We're or? talking about Lowe's, we're talking about people that are dealing with Lowe's, and yeah, Home yeah. Depot, and Wayfair, yeah, yeah. Um, and I would say Menards. So some of the big, um, big box guys, and right now yeah, even yeah. Sam's Club, were um, talking about potential vanity opportunities with Sam's. And this was sort of kind of out of the blue, it sounds like. Oh. I mean, the, the case has been out there for 
really, I guess since March or so, yeah. I think. March. Is when, yeah. But the thing is, there is a big uh, transition period. Yeah, yeah. When you start to come into Vietnam and start sourcing. So yeah, when yeah. you actually place a PO after all the samples have been approved. Mm-hmm, so as mm-hmm. I said, you know, yeah. in the first six months or towards the end of last year, we've had inquiries, we have sample, uh, you know, requests, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we have this sort of thing. Yeah. Like it all, all started escalating after, was it June? Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. Mr. Trump decided to put the 25%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's right, when the, right. uh, the purchase orders flew in. Yeah, you yeah. know, some with uh, authorized and approved samples, some with nothing. Yeah, yeah. So people are desperate yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. that aspect. So mm-hmm. and I think I think the same could be said about furniture. It's just that we decided to shut the door on furniture in 2019 by just saying, sorry, we can't take any new furniture business mm-hmm. because of the difficulty that the traditional furniture is facing in terms of our mm-hmm. um, our manufacturing capabilities. Because mm-hmm. I was going to ask to what degree some of your um, Long-time customers are getting squeezed out, but it seems that you kind of like drawn the line and yeah. said no more new business for furniture. Uh, I would say we, uh, the right way to put it is no more new customers in new yeah. uh, in furniture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we have also trimmed down uh, some of our less important customers, so as to say. Mm-hmm. But we have kept identified two or three very important long-term strategic partners throughout the years mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we have kept the capacity in furniture for them exclusively yeah, yeah. but for everyone else we are just filling out our, the remaining of our capacities in other categories yeah yeah I see I see um, and what about lead times I mean what type of um, effect has all this had on your lead times and um, the lead times on our uh, most regularly brand products are kept the same. On uh, what, what type of products? On the products that we've been running for one, two, three years. Yeah, yeah. You know, those have been kept the same. But the problem for us is in traditional furniture, there's way too, way too many groups that doesn't last for more than two years. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if we have a group that's been running for two and, two and three years, mm-hmm. and the volume still running the same, it's a rarity for us. Mm-hmm. So often, if there's a lot of new developments that comes mm-hmm. with these uh, furniture groups, mm-hmm. and new development lead times have been stretched to sometimes 100 to 120 days mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of the struggle to get these materials and also because of the struggle for labor and uh, like, uh, labor and engineer. Yeah. So we, we do hear that there's been a lot of competition for labor. Have you seen a, a migration of uh, workers to other industries or um, help? For sure, there's been migration. Dude, I don't think you know that. I mean, uh, for these things, you know, I think you see that labor is because of the, you know, the, we need to pay for the French industry, we need to pay more to keep our workers. Yeah, yeah. We see from the other industries, they also come to invest in mainland. So this in the industry, they pay better mm-hmm. for their workers. So I think it's difficult, it's challenging for us to keep workers mm-hmm. to work you know, for a long term for us. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons because in the furniture uh, manufacturer occupies the big land. So mm-hmm. the output for per square feet land and the output for per person compared with the other industries is very low. Mm-hmm. So that's why you know, we cannot afford to keep you know, you know raise our prices. And especially in our industry, you know, everybody is struggling, mm-hmm. not just us, including mm-hmm. the wholesalers in the US or the retailers yeah. in the US. Mm-hmm. So I think mean, it's it very, very difficult for us to increase by even three or three to five percent. Mm-hmm. And this is you know, for the other industries not the issue. I don't know, we are actually very struggling mm-hmm. for the local force to keep the local force yes. here. But fortunately, you know, we are in the right spot here in this area because we are all surrounded by a lot of the neighborhoods. You know? yeah, yeah. So we can easily, but for some people, they go to a little bit further, like uh, uh, 10 miles away, the new industrial park. Mm-hmm. So it's all surrounded by farmland. Mm-hmm. For them, they, they have no way to hire any workers because you know, by the law, by the Vietnamese law, you know, the industry park, you know, investor is not allowed to build their own dormitory. Oh. 
Okay. So they, they, they cannot you know, build their dormitory while all the farmland surrounding it. It's no home you know, for workers. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that's a challenge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and what about the, uh, what is, what is a typical um, furniture, I mean, like per month right now? I heard 200 to 250 is about, uh, you know, U.S. dollars per month as a, as a typical wage for a war production worker. Is that about? I think you know, we are running uh, a lot of variety of furniture, terms of furniture. Mm -hmm. I think the overall case is you now we are talking about you know, FOB from our oh, factory. We're talking about workers' wage. Wages. Wages. Yeah, wages. Yeah, wages. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. wages, you know, I think the right now is, you know, $300. Mm -hmm. Probably $300 to, between $300 to $400 per month. In, in Vietnam. Including overtime. Including, including over, okay, okay. If you're talking about minimum wage, yes, 200 yeah. to 250 Okay, two hundred to two fifty is is more than closer to the minimum wage. Minimum wage at eight hours a day work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so three hundred to four hundred includes overtime. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's for the workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The executive, you know, we get paid a lot more. Yes, and yes. Sometimes they even close to to work in China yesterday. Mm -hmm. And if we want to keep a good, you know, that marketing manager, mm -hmm. probably we need to pay. $1,500. Yes. Yeah, I see. I see. Um, but it sounds like there's a lot of opportunity to sustain your business over the long term with this. It's a sort of, you have to kind of juggle. You have to, you, you have to manage your capacity, your um, available capacity for, um, for the industry at large. So how is, what's, what's the best way to do that? Well, for us, capacity is really a subjective term mm -hmm. because you have your manufacturing capabilities and with some products, you can only run 200 containers a month, yeah. whereas with other products, you can run up to double the, that capacity. Mm -hmm. So as we were explaining, you know, with traditional furniture, that's really not where we can hit our growth in terms of capacity, mm -hmm. but with the possibilities of vanity and others, that's where we can really I would yeah. say at least increase by 50% this year mm -hmm. in terms of our overall sales mm -hmm. and revenue with, while maintaining the same number of workers and same number of mm -hmm. you know, equipment and land. Yeah, I see. Aspect. I see. So our current strategy is since you know, we have a marker as our investor, so we will keep you know, a certain capacity mm -hmm. for you know, the ART or uh, this part, start with mm -hmm. and the current goal at uh, Thomas Care. Care. Yes. So this is our priority. Also, you know, we are selling through our market arm, Tony Insights, to yes. uh, quite a lot of you know, the big you know, the retailers like RTG, Backhawk. Yeah. We will continue to support yes. you know, what, they, what their requirements. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the capacity, we, we are trying to adjust, adjust to run some of the big volume mm -hmm. product like a vanity product. Yes. Or some, you know, Metal shelf and you know, metal working station mm -hmm. for the big box players. I say. Before we didn't have this opportunity, so everything is on you know, the tariff. Mm -hmm. So people, this more and more these big big box players, they come to the Vienna and start to work us, work with us directly. Yeah. So we are working with Home Depot directly. Mm -hmm. We are working with IH also directly. Mm -hmm. We are working with Great Apparel directly. Mm -hmm. By doing business directly with them, we get paid uh, not you know, a lot more, but at least you know, probably 10%, mm -hmm. you know, 10 more than mm -hmm. our uh, business with you know, the uh, distributor I see. in the US. That's also we can get some benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And plus, you know, we increase our you know, capacity efficiency. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, is so is is turnkey also that's the owner of or, or well, your really home insights yeah home, in, home insights uh, owns turnkey or owns the, the brand 
Yeah, yeah, I see. So I it's all part of the marketing arm then, yes, in other words. It's all on the inside. Yeah, okay. All right. So is, um, and, and um, Turnkey is still primarily home office and home entertainment. Correct. And it's, it's really an assortment of product under the home insights umbrella. Yeah, it's part, yeah, I see. So, um, and, and how is the home office and home entertainment, is, how, is the, how is your facility, is it pretty equipped? In other words, is plenty of capacity for that part of the line or that part of your um, business? In terms of efficiency, I think you know, the home office, that's probably you know, is you know, worst to run. In terms of the efficiency, mm -hmm. I think uh, we are now trying to figure out to develop some, you know, the new product for the market and by higher you know, uh, to increase our efficiency. Mm -hmm. So the way we are doing now, we probably you know, focus on the you know, sit and stand table. So this is a new concept. So you see a lot of this sit and stand table in the office for the industry, mm -hmm. the home office. Many people do this, mm -hmm. so we are doing this together with a you know, 10K brand, mm -hmm. and we have our uh, China partner, you know, Marker. Yes. We are thinking to develop some you know, good product, so we can sell to you know, Marker's retail channel, mm -hmm. and also sell to US through our market arm for me. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what we are focusing on. I see. On this. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like um, the um, the timing of the uh, of Marcor's investment in 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 Starwood was was um, well timed overall. I mean, is that do you what do you feel the advantages of our with that partnership with Marcor? I think with the investment you know, uh, from Marcor, you know, we uh, not only to get some you know the cash. Mm -hmm. uh, give it a factory uh, company a very good position in the mm -hmm. cash flow, mm -hmm. but also you know, we can get a lot of support from the technical team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Technical team. So we get benefit from their market arm, you know, branding in US, ART and Paraco, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, Ro as well. Because Ro is going to buy also some of the metal components from. I oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, we also can uh, get a lot of you know, support in the technical part from that. Because, you know, the, today, you know, the one of you know, the really you know, challenge for the most of these venture factories is our engineering. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, uh, we are difficult to recruit you know, the engineering people in this country. So if you know we run a big volume, mm -hmm. like a five piece set that everybody can rent. If you know we talk about to run a whole collection for ART or for somewhere else, mm -hmm. it's difficult. It's not difficult for manufacturing, but it's difficult. It takes a lot of time to have the engineering drawings done mm -hmm. because we don't have enough engineers. Oh, I uh, see. Yeah. You know, with you know the uh, partnership. With marker, you know, we can get this very easily. So we can even, you know, send our request to marker China to get this joint that in a very uh, quick time. Mm -hmm. So this this a, a lot of benefits. Yes. A good example is our Bobby Burke collection is yeah. right here at Starwood. Mm -hmm. I'm probably shipping it earlier than any collection that we have in the past four years. Oh. Okay. You know, but it's probably forty eight pieces. Yeah, or so that had to be developed here in the engineering and you know, a lot of partnership between mm -hmm. the two companies to make sure that everything shipped on time. Yeah. Shipping on time is a major pain point mm -hmm. for people right now. So yeah, you know, we have to be very, very good partners. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not easy. So but if it was easy everybody would be doing yeah. it. So. Yeah, right, exactly. Exactly. Um, so I guess Finishing up here, what does the um, future hold in store? Are there some are there some expansion plans or um, any any type of um, other plans that you'd like to talk about in terms of uh, as accommodating as, future growth? As we're seeing today, I think the land prices has will drop out yeah. and the rent 
has more than doubled just in this area. Mm-hmm. And wages is going up to mandatory increase ten to fifteen percent every year. Yeah. So in terms of expansion plan, I would I wouldn't say it's the best time for us to expand right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. But for to you make you the best use of our current resources, our current land, our current workshops and our current workers, mm-hmm. that would be our best plan to increase yeah. revenue without making you will see you know, something of expansion on the opposite side. Mm-hmm. It's very, very few you see the expansion on the Kiska side. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons because the land is so expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, we you saw from you know, the uh, PowerPoint. So when we bought this piece of land back to 2004, we paid only seven dollars per square meter. Mm-hmm. So 2015. We bought you know, our land for the KC and the RC, which was you know, thirty-four dollars. Mm-hmm. Today, the same land will cost the investor from you know, one hundred thirty dollars average. So, and to the rent even ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So people pay the rent in our area is uh, three fifty dollars per square meter. Wow. <laughs> you know, even though we rent out our facility today. We may make more money than we operate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So this is not healthy. Right. I right. think it's a, a big risk. Yeah. So I don't think you know we will you know, have an you know, expansion, but mm-hmm. by just you know focusing to how to take use of our current capacity. Yes. I think for us that's a, not smart. Yeah, yeah. Is compare China is Vietnam. I think the efficiency in the factory is still p- pretty big difference there. I think with Marco's help, and uh, we have Jack and his team here trying to help to really the same factory, same yeah. workers, and to really increase the efficiency and the quality. And also, I mentioned about the finish level and the mm-hmm. need to because that is really our Marco's strengths and the yes. strengths there as well for Caracol. So all those things and really could help to increase the work. The value. Yes. Okay, so the time yes. and the, yes. so we have <laughs> very good. Yeah, a uh, lot of facility to say. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank I appreciate you. that. That's good information. Thank, thank you. you.